And so I want everyone to like be clear. Sorry, I have to plug my computer in. I'm such a misfit. Um, as I'm all like on a roll. I thought oh, I was video, prepared. The video is just there brilliant right now. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I know, right? I'm all <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, Edit. I want <laughs> Edit I want here. everyone. Well, it's that time again. Welcome back to the Surrounded by Idiots radio podcast. This is one of your hosts, Dr. Tony Dufresne, and the other host being the lovely... Lexi Rodriguez, what is up? What's up with you? You've been a lot, uh, you've been gone for a little bit. I told uh, you. I try to your, warn you. I like snuck it in. Y- 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 listen, listen. I you like don't have snuck to, you it don't, in. You don't have to know, warn me about shit. You I know what exactly what your I, MO I, is. No, exactly. But After I doing snuck this for it in on the last show I was on. I go... You're like, we're about to be at 200 shows. And I was like, yeah, it'll be like well, a it's week 100, or two or three or not four. 200. But, oh, sorry. You know, that's what I that's meant. That's okay. That's same okay. diff. But you knew. You knew know. what it was popping. Yeah, I, I totally knew. That, that's why I'm not, first of all, I'm not surprised. And I never did pressure that. I figured, uh, and I, I, know, that's I, I typically leave best. it up to you to come in when you're inspired, and then we'll talk about I know. stuff. So That's so totally this, how I so, operate. And, and you were inspired, very inspired, so much so. Mm-hmm. That you sent me a, a couple uh, texts, and uh, one had to do with, uh, sort of in a roundabout way, had to do with relationships and uh, breaking up and kind of in trouble, and the signs, really, of being yeah. in a troubled relationship. And I thought that was really good, because, you know, even though a lot of the clients that uh, that I deal with, they, usually they come in and they talk about expanding their life and, and having more success or not knowing what the next step in their life is because usually like I said usually they're about 25 to 35 years old and they want right. to do something else or something different but inevitably there's something wrong with a relationship in their life right Be- because if that if that part's not jiving with them more than likely the relationship stuff there's something not right because they're it's kind of an inauthenticity type of a thing so I, that's why I thought this was a really good thing to um to talk about Today. Right, and I just think that um, that I want people to get a nice, clear outlook on the inevitable signs that are going to happen if this isn't the person you're going to be with. And nine times out of ten, it isn't the person you're going to be with. So our topic today is four signs your relationship is in trouble. And it's more of just like, you know, don't listen to this this podcast and then go home and be like, you know, baby – it's fucking over. You know, I'm not going to speak for you, but I think I know after low these many years, I think I know kind of what your gig is. And it's you're you're very much of a, you know, time is precious and you're very much of a in, mm-hmm. in the moment and in the now type of a person. And I am, too. And I think that's why we we have a lot of similar thoughts about stuff. But when it comes down to relationships, you know, the reasons why we talk about this stuff and the reasons why we want to share this information is because we don't think that anybody should waste their time in something that's not that's not allowing them to evolve. Let's I want to start off with uh, something that's very very popular in in the psychology world and it's something that was developed by John Gottman. He's a relationship expert. Signs your relationship is in trouble. Now he goes through and uh, he indicates that conflict is healthy and it's needed in a relationship. As a matter of fact, I completely agree, and I think you probably do too. You need conflict. If you don't have conflict in your relationship, it's a terrible sign because it means that you guys are enmeshing. And I'm doing this uh, right. two hula hoop thing on the video where yeah. you guys like overlap with each other completely. And you know what happens when that happens? You lose your sense of self. Totally. And if somebody totally. loses their sense of self in a relationship, you're doomed because uh, then there's a passive aggressive. And then that's 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 a clear example of somebody waking up one day and just one day out of the blue and saying, I don't even know who I am anymore. Totally. And and how many times does that happen? That I want to use it happens all the time. But I want to use the, the word conflict a little bit carefully because there's different kinds of disagreements. And I think that on a podcast that we just recently posted on how to pick up and flirt, I touch on how to disagree appropriately and to understand the person has an opinion and probably a really great theory behind it. Um, but it's not yours and it's not supposed to be yours right. because you are a completely different person. So I think, can we say that if the conflict conflict isn't 
benefiting the relationship like because you don't want negative conflict to me conflict sounds like it's like a negative thing like well but that's but you can take it that way but it really isn't conflict is just is just communicating a difference in opinions right or your so stance it's kind on of something. disagreeing appropriately yeah. right yeah. and and that's fucking so rad like when you're in a relationship where you can passionately discuss your difference of opinions and come out the other end of that relationship feeling like number one you know more now about this person and kind of how their mind works but number two you were kind of schooled on another opinion that you appreciate and are going to add to your little document system in your brain so that the next conversation you have about this particular topic, you're a little bit more well-versed in that situation. And you're just kind of like, thank you. Like when I have a conversation like that, especially with someone I'm dating, I want to just like thank them, you know, like thank you for being like, shut the fuck up and listen for a second. Cause obviously I get a little hype sometimes when I have an opinion, but I need like, the person you're supposed to be with forever will know how to handle y- the way you express your opinions. Yeah, if you guys are respectful with each other, absolutely, and that's and that that's really one of the keys. And that and that goes right into these four things I'm going to tell. I'm going to indicate that John Gottman indicated uh, in regards to the uh, the the trouble. Like you you your tr- your relationship is going to be in trouble if there's criticism, and and it's not and there'll be criticism kind of here and there and stuff. But I'm talking about. It's an attack on your character or your totally. personality rather than I, the behavior itself. And and it always comes down to this. And it not even in a not even in a conflict situation in regards to relationship. It always comes down to even if you look at from from a like a, a self image standpoint, or if somebody says you're you failed this course, it doesn't mean you're a failure or you lost the game. It doesn't mean you're a loser. It's the difference between looking at it in terms of the behavior versus the character. But criticism in this situation, when it gets in a relationship situation in a bad way, means they start to criticize you for who you are. It's your attack on your character. Like an an example I put down is like, how stupid can you be? A better alternative than how stupid can you be should be like, it really frustrates me when you don't listen. So yeah, you're, so but you're I would owning, still get annoyed at that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, but 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 it. But do you see the difference though? If you say I'm having a reaction based upon something, and I'm owning my reaction, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm right. saying I ha- I am frustrated, and it makes me frustrated because of something. Yeah, and that and that way, and but hey, it doesn't keep the couples from not getting upset or from having a fight it doesn't get that's not the point the point is you're going to have those little things here and there i hope so uh, on some level because if you don't then there's a big problem then you guys are living in a dream world and it's not going to work the second thing is defensiveness and now once you enter into it, it defensiveness confirmation bias usually sets in and you tune out the other person uh, which leads to blame shifting and excuses confirmation bias being meaning that if somebody points out something that you know, you know that it's probably not right, or maybe you're in the wrong, or yeah. you know maybe there's a possibility you're in the wrong. You, it's really hard. That it's really really hard to admit that in that situation that you are actually right. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, it actually has a lot to do with the way it's processed. It's processed when somebody attacks you in terms of your opinion and makes you defensive, or you become defensive on something. It triggers the same chemicals, the same hormones, and the same aspect of the brain as a fight or flight response. Right, it's, and it's so al- almost like a survival technique. I think it's so important. This is, goes back to just the communication in all relationships of your life. It is so important to know this person, and in this particular podcast, we're talking about relationships, sexual relationships, intimate relationships. It is so important to know this person's love language and the way that they feel when someone's communicating a certain way to them and the way that they communicate maybe when they're a little defensive and then you kind of have to react through that. I always like to look at it as a dance. Like mm-hmm. each relationship you has is different than you have is different than the next or the one before. And the way you argued or the way that you you know, joked with that 
person is completely different. So you have to be smart enough and aware enough to read that person so that you can dance with them the way you should be dancing with them. Otherwise, they are going to feel like you're attacking their character or they are going to get defensive and start cussing you out. And that's Mm -hmm. just fucked up. It's a waste of a dope conversation that you could have when you're like, hey, babe, it kind of makes me frustrated when you cuss in front of my parents. Like, Mm -hmm. that's just not cool. I I don't think that they like it. And then your girlfriend's going to be like, well, you're attacking my character, blah, 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 blah. You just have to be able to express it and and just make that that person a better person. Yeah, and th- yeah, and if and if she comes out and says something like that, it, 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 that that's right. She's you're actually not. You're you're just pointing out a behavior, and you're trying to the, you know. But I mean, come on, Lex. I mean, the the whole thing is is that if you're with a person and they become vulnerable with you and they become open with you and you have a deeper relationship than just you know dating and going out and and hooking up, you're going to know where I call them. The, I call it the big red buttons. You're going to know where every where that person's buttons are or what yeah. those person's buttons are. Is it <laughs> is it you know you're just like your mother i mean that's oh, yeah. like or is it you know whatever the case may be you know where they are and the entire point of being in a relationship a trusting relationship is trusting that other person with the fact that you know where those buttons are and you're not going to use them you're not right. going to push them totally if you, if you have you been in a situation where the other person knew your big buttons right your big you know like like big open wounds that you totally, did that we all yeah. do and they just yeah. stuck a fucking stick in that thing mm-hmm. where where's your trust and how and did you ever allow them to have that level of trust again I love that you said that because no fuck that that's not cool and I think as you get older exactly. your vulnerabilities start to change the difference between when I was younger and starting off dating and and my vulnerabilities then were like scared scared to be naked or like you know scared for them to see me with my shirt off or in the morning with my morning breath and shit like that those were my vulnerabilities or them to see me without makeup on or like the stupidest most shallow shit but it but it's a thing you got to evolve in dating and i think Mm -hmm. that once you start to evolve yes you still have vulnerabilities but they're different as you get older like you're right right now mine are the little things and the very few things in life that get to me, I, I'm very good at not dealing with the the things that piss me off. I'm very good at placing myself in the situations where I don't have to be around that. But if you're my significant other, you know those because you should. Because if you're not sharing that shit with your significant other, then you don't feel comfortable with them. But if I'm yeah, sharing exactly. this with you now, my vulnerabilities are that you know that my the the my biggest fear is to marry someone like my dad and you say that to me when we're fighting about whatever that it's fucking done. hurts it's done because that's right. like that that's almost a, a, i mean in in going through the couples counseling experience that i've had uh the, it, it it's almost you can't even you can't come back most of the time you can't come back from something like no, that if you know hurtful. where that it's that like... biggest red button is well th- that plus the fact that you have now actually completely violated the trust agreement you guys have had but i've like violated it yeah because they give they gave you the most the most sensitive important thing in them knowing that you weren't going to push it and and you did totally and that crumbles and when you feel relationships comfortable to open irre- up with someone like that irreparable. yeah that's crazy yeah, i love that so, you say that the trust agreement can we just acknowledge really quick that the trust agreement is totally i mean it's spoken but it's not spoken like hey sign right here this is our trust agreement agreement please don't hurt my feelings the trust agreement is just given when you start to be in a committed relationship and i think that dating nowadays for millennials and for like young entrepreneurs i think that people think that unless i give you a verbal agreement and you go fuck someone else or date someone else or don't call me back for a couple of weeks. Like, it's like, well, like we didn't make any agreements. It's like, yeah, but we opened up to each other. Like, so do you, you, do you see you that know, a lot you with, know your friends and my... with your friends? Do you see that? I mean, yeah. is that something that, that, that's almost like, well, we didn't agree on it or well, we, you didn't say anything yeah, or we didn't, totally, or we didn't I do. talk about I do. it. So we're not I, exclusive or like, but it's like, yeah, but you were like pretty vulnerable with them the other night right. when you guys were like chatting about life and shit. And like, that's mm. a big deal to me. 
That's a huge thing, and it's it, it it's it's kind of sad that that's the case. I mean, I you know it's always person to person, but it is kind of sad that you can't. There isn't anything implied anymore, right? That's a, why as I want you people go deeper understand into a that relationship. if you're dating and it's it's implied, I don't care mm-hmm. what year it is, I don't care with all these dating apps and blah 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 blah. It's implied. Trust each other. If you're opening up to someone, really cherish that 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 person opened up to you, and that's your agreement. Uh, it should be. I totally agree with that completely. So, uh, so the first one's criticism. The second one's defensiveness. These are signs that your your relationship is not doing well. The third one is contempt, and contempt is blatant disrespect, like mocking and eye rolling and passive aggressive and sarc- sarcastic humor. You know the humor. You know that. Uh, Ew! These all sound so ridiculous. They're just, yeah, but but that happens all the time. In, in relationships and because you're but what that what that shows is it shows that that the core of the relationship is not solid to the point where now you are going out of your way to actually hurt this person in a passive aggressive way to actually take a little notches out of them because right. you feel as though you've been disrespected or it feels don't as you though feel that you're, like, they're not around for you yeah don't you feel like though if and I've been here before where if I am so angry towards someone that I want to purposely hurt their feelings, I that's that's a a loud and clear sign that I should not be with that person. Yeah, like, but that's it, purposely you know? though, Lex. I mean, I'm talking that there's a good chance a lot of these are really not on purpose, but they're more uh, subconscious. Yeah, because that does happen. But yes, I agree with you completely. I mean, if it is on if it is on pur- the thing is, is that people. People get into situations, especially when it comes to marriage and then having a couple kids and having a house and a mortgage and shared expenses, they feel as though they're trapped. And then they feel as though, well, I have, yeah, to, make right. this, I have, to, I have to make this work. I, oh, God. Well, that's where the passive aggressive comes in. And, you know, the interesting part about it is nine times out of ten, they're not mad at the other person. They're mad at themselves. And they're projecting this energy onto the other person because they made these choices to get themselves into the situation that they're in. And the other person is there, and it's called projection in psychology. You project all of that, or you displace all of that energy onto them, and that's the blame shifting part about it. And then all of a sudden, they're the enemy. Whereas you're you're all you're pissed at yourself more than anybody because you're yeah. in that position. So, and that's so watch out for that. It's really really easy to fall into that trap and not realize it until you're like, oh shit, you know what? Maybe right. this is my bad. Uh, and then the fourth one is uh, stonewalling or withdrawing, which is absolutely like being non-responsive or just saying whatever or not. Res- I mean, that is and if it gets to that point, it sounds like all of these ones, though, are people that aren't living life passionately and aware because well, th- well they're not because they've gotten to, into a situation to where maybe they were. But things have happened. And and what's the reason why things get this far? Lack of communication. Yeah, lack and lack of humanity lack of for yourself and the people around you. Yeah, it but, sounds like if you're treating your significant other like this, you're not treating other people very good. So, of course, well, of course our yeah. answer is always be a good human. Get yourself together first so that not only are you a good person to the lady at the coffee shop, you're a good fucking person. You're the best person to your significant other. And when these things co- arise, because they will, we're all human, I get it, but you'll you'll be like, Ooh, I didn't like the way I felt towards them at that moment. I need to address this or this relationship just isn't working. And that does. Yeah. When you start, this is how I knew one of the signs I knew that me and my recent ex weren't going to work out was that I start to resent him and he's a dope dude. And I remember just being like, that's not, that's not fucking fair to him that I'm starting to resent him because our relationship, because, because individually as one, as a, as a couple in a relationship, it wasn't meshing anymore. And I started to resent him for that because I didn't want to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I was like, shit, I don't want to, I don't want to break up. Like, I, I love this dude. I want to be with this dude. But I could feel deep down inside that it wasn't working out. And that feeling caused me to start being, like, mean and resentful. Perfect and try example. To make up, Perfect and try example. to make up excuses mm-hmm. in my head, like, mm-hmm. it's 1230. Where were you all night? It's yeah. over. It's never yeah. going to work out. You know what I mean? Like, when in reality, this is this is a quote, and this is something that has been really, like, really pushing on me the past few weeks is that the way that 
you feel about someone else has only to do with you and the way and then vice versa. The way that you make somebody feel has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that person and what's popping in their life at it that should moment. Be. It should so be. when you yeah. start to feel negative towards your significant other, go back and dig inside of yourself and, and explore those feelings because it's not them. I promise you guys it's not them. 100%. A hundred percent. The last thing I want to add real quick before you get into yours is one thing I'm going to add to this. And this, the four signs that, I, that we just talked about, the criticism, defensiveness, uh, contentment, and the withdrawal uh, were from uh, John Gottman. What I, want, what I want to bring in is this. Sign your relationship is in trouble. When you feel as though the attention and the care, uh, the, the balance is not being achieved through your relationship, and so now all of a sudden you go to outside sources for extra attention, yeah. extra intimacy. Yep. Extra, yeah, totally. You know everything, anything. That's if huge. you find yourself all of a sudden rubbernecking, or if you find yourself out, hey, honey, I'm going to go out and kind of get a couple beers with the guys, and all of a sudden you're out there flirting with a group of girls, taking your ring off, and shit. yeah, exactly. If you start doing that, that's big time trouble. That, and, and it, it may seem obvious, but maybe not. Because a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's just harmless. I mean, I, you can look, but you can't touch totally. and all this bullshit. Not really. Because if it goes against what you typically do and how you typically uh, go through your process uh, of being in your relationship with your typical boundaries, and if it's not the same as it used to be, and you need a little extra, or you need yeah. that you need that girl to That's talk to okay. you. That's not okay. That's not how it should be. It's not okay. It's so funny. So I had a conversation with a friend the other day, and... We're talking about like my recent breakup and kind of just tell, catching him up on my life, blah, blah, blah. He's a regular at um, the restaurant that I work at and I haven't seen him in a while. So we're just chatting, chatting. And he's like, he's talking about, I'm like, he goes, do you want to get married and have kids someday? And I'm like, yeah, of course I do. You know, and I, I don't need to, but I, of course, why wouldn't I want to meet the love of my life and just build this family with and this partnership? Like, of course I do. And he's like, so you think that if once you end up getting married and after you have kids, you, you really like think that um, whoever you end up marrying won't step out on you or won't cheat on you. And he was like very serious. Like, so you really think I was like almost offended, like damn dude. And, <laughs> but in my head I was like, yeah, I really do. Because if I'm going to marry and build a family, build this partnership with someone, I'm confident in myself that I won't miss anything or that 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 character flaw that he has because he is a cheater if he were to ha or if he were you know hypothetically speaking happened to cheat on me I am confident and I'm even more confident 10 years from now that I wouldn't miss those signs you know and I really am like I'm 100% confident and I feel like if you have those feelings that's why you need to be careful if like if you're not ready to get married don't get married if you're not clear on who this person is, don't make those commitments because I think it is possible to be in a relationship that you I, that you don't you know think about another person and I really do and that's coming from someone who it is really hard for me to be committed and faithful with but right. I think it's possible. I you think know? it's I, I think it's possible to that we all naturally as animals we have tendencies to want to fantasize about other people of and that's and that's actually been proven as something that that ninety nine point nine percent of us do on some form or another but there's a whole there's a big difference between you know having certain thoughts about that things and then and then acting on it or starting right. to test the waters on that right. Um, and that comes down to just a, a uh, fragile ego issue. If you have to totally. go out and get extra attention from some someplace 100%, else without commu without communicating with the other person that should that should have your utmost respect, uh, because you've decided to create a relationship with them, and you should go to them first and then chat about things. Now, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if you guys decide it's splitting up, then you're going to. But at least, at least, you know, be honest and forthright with them and try to get down to the reasons why. That that's right. the case. So, uh, what uh, what are your signs? So, uh, what I came up with um, four of my own signs, and I want everyone. I want it to be clear to everyone that we're talking about like not a new relationship. I mean, at least I am with these signs. I'm talking about this is a situation 
um, when your relationship was once very cushioned, comfortable, and you were like stoked, like you were kind of like, damn, okay, I think I did it right this time. Or I think, you know, I think this may be the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. These are you cause, cause you shut out these feelings and thoughts and these signs you completely defend yourself and you try to shut them out because because at once you thought you were right and at once you felt really strongly about this person and you were you know telling everyone that you were were stoked and blah 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 I want everyone to be clear that this is the situation where you once thought your relationship was cush and you're starting to see the signs so these are the beginning signs and just understand that it happens and I want you guys to feel comfortable dealing with it because it's something you have to deal with. And if you do it appropriately, the Band-Aid will hurt, but it will not hurt that much. And I promise you're not a sociopath. So basically, my first one is that when it's impacting your career or your focus um, on a on a particular project that that was once like you were once inspired by this person. This goes back to my last one, but you were once inspired by this person and now it's kind of impacting your focus. Like you wake up in the morning to go do your thing or to go to work and, and the relationship at home, the energy just wasn't right. And it ended up hanging on to you that whole day. And like, that's not cool. Like, and that's a real thing. And sometimes people think that that's an excuse. Don't use energy as an excuse to say, that you don't want to be with me anymore, but energy is a big thing. And I think that, you know, when someone's energy is affecting your focus or your or, career, right? or is it a response or is it your reaction to their energy? And do you, and would you be able to, it's change, your reaction. Would you be sure. able to, would you be able to change that understanding that they may be going through a lot? They may be energy draining or, or trying to take stuff away. There, is there a way you can, compartmentalize that and keep that to where it is to where it doesn't impact yeah. you? Yeah. No, I think you can try. I think you should definitely try to. But these are like the the tell all final signs that you're like, okay, you're affecting I would say if, my if, shit. That, if that's going on for a while and even if you have discussions with your other person and it still continues. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Right. I, I, definitely I, yeah, I try to dig mm-hmm. deep into it and figure out why this is happening because there were times in my relationship where I wasn't going to blame him. I was definitely more focused because I was like, I'm not going to let this let it be an excuse to not be focused on my shit or my career. But then it got to the point where it just was. It just was an issue that I had to get out of my life. The second one is losing yourself. Um, for example, Say, and and you brought this up in, in the article, but losing yourself. So, for example, saying yes because this dude is your boyfriend when you really want to say no. Or saying, yeah, of course I'll play video games with you when you're really like, shit, this is mine. I mean, I don't want to do this shit. Yes, there is a fine line in loving this person so much that you'll do anything to make them happy. You should feel like that and you should do that. You should definitely make sacrifices in a relationship. That's the point. But when you start to lose yourself, you get a little bit too deep in making that person happy that you stop making yourself happy. That's when you have to address the situation. Three, sexual desire. Like what about, tell me about this too, Tony, like what you think. But what about when you start to picture someone else while you're having sex with them so that you can have an orgasm? If you're in the moment with a person, you're with the person. You are present in that moment. You're, it's like meditation. You, when you're present in the moment, you're not thinking about what's going to happen right. next week. Or you're not right, thinking right. about what, who, you where, where you're at or you know what you have to buy uh, at the store. You should be able to get away. Like, like you said, it's like a meditation. You should be able to get away in the moment and turn everything off because it is. It's like going to the gym. Like we've talked before. It's like meditating. It's like doing what you want to do that for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And it's going to make you a better person when you get out of it. So I think that sex is a really important thing that if you can't get away in the moment and all you're doing is thinking about work and the shit you have to do, that you need to address your sexual chemistry. And and there it is possible to revive it, but it needs to be addressed because you should be able to get away and it should always make you feel good. 
Always. Okay, question for you then. If that's the case, let's let's say you're you come home and you're just you're beat. Work was not that great. You're you're not feeling up to it. But uh, your man is super horny, wants to jump on you and bend you over the kitchen sink, right? Then right. you're not dialed in because you're you're still decompressing from the day and you have issues or maybe you don't feel that great or maybe you're hungry or maybe you got to pee, you know, any of that kind of, <laughs> right? any of that kind of stuff. So he's, he's trying to maneuver you, uh, you know, over the, over the uh, dishwasher and you're in, so what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to say, I, wait, I have to pee. I want to go to dinner. Give me a second so, so you, and then so we'll get back that. to this. Right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So you, say, okay. you have okay. to feel comfortable cause, because then you're, he's not going to get the most out of it from you because you're not into it. And you're definitely not going to get the most out of it mm-hmm. because you're not into it. And I think that when people, they try to place they're, they try to um, like set aside their emotions for their significant other a lot because they think that that's their re- that's their responsibility being in this relationship. If you look at it more as communicating those emotions to them so they understand why you're mm-hmm. feeling these things, mm-hmm. then you get back on the same page and then you fuck the shit out of each other. Brilliant. And I then totally it's agree. Amazing. Completely so, agree. Okay, last one. And that's all communication. We so could talk about sex forever. So um, last <laughs> one, number four. Four signs your love is in trouble. My number four is when they are no longer your muse. And I I wrote down that I don't know if it's fair. I'm kind of exploring this um, concept right now is I don't know if it's fair to hold someone um, accountable or responsible to be your muse or your inspiration. But I do think that it's fair to use your significant other as an inspiration or as a muse. Um, so I, th- I think that when they, they stop to inspire you, not because they're coming in and they're not like, Hey, here's an inspirational quote today. You know, mm-hmm. get inspired, mm-hmm. babe. No, naturally they stop to naturally inspire you. Maybe just by them maybe, being themselves. Yeah. Just saying? by them right. being themselves with you, your chemistry. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing you're going to be inspired by another human differently than the next. But mm-hmm. At that moment in your life, pay attention to what inspires you and let it be helpful for your growth. And then when it when it's not, when you're not growing anymore, because eventually, like we said, nine times out of ten, it's going to end. Then move on to the next person that's your muse at that per- at that time in your life, because you're you change, you evolve every five years, every ten years, hopefully every five minutes. You're evolving, right. Right. and so <laughs> your taste in another human is going to change. It Go really with the g- flow. You got to yeah. roll with right. it. It changes. Don't be afraid of it. A really good point that's going to that's going to bring us into a whole different show about uh you know non-permanence and about uh people coming and going in your life and reasons and not to hold on to a person because of a social construct that you have to be with a person your whole life because you signed a piece of paper. I am as as everybody knows, I am s- insanely against that. Insanely against that because yeah. people change all. People change every second, right. and just because you get married at uh, twenty two and you have the same interests and all that kind of stuff and whatever, if I, if you're if it's for if you're forty two and you guys are completely different people, I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to either of you or your journey or your kids to continue t- to really compromise way too much of who you are and to you know put yourself in a position where you can't totally. be you can't be your authentic self so that but that's a whole yes, other show exactly exactly good show dude it yeah if be, you have questions on you. how to address it or anything like that um email me at lexi at crucial awareness.com hit me up on social media and um you can find to- tony in all his areas of the web you go to the website javabud.com and that's got all the videos and the podcasts and the freebie that I'm giving away, which is the seven phrases to create more happiness and, and money and love in your life. It's free, absolutely free. It's just like a little ebook cheat sheet thing that I made. Uh, and nice. all, you have to, all you have to do is go onto the website and put your uh, – I want a good nickname, though. I want a really good nickname in your email. So put your email in. But give me a good nickname. I, I initially I said I want your porn name, but then people were like, a lot of I guess a lot of people don't know that whole thing about you know your the porn name being your the street you grew up on. That's stripper. And the no, it's, it's same diff, but that's the thing. So <laughs> so people got a little bit lost with that, so I kind of changed it up. So give me a good nickname. I've got some good ones. I I'll, I'll probably share those in a couple of weeks. So 
but uh, that's where you can find us. Uh, have a good week. And uh, oh, it, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all that kind of fun stuff. You can find us on there. If, you, if there's any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave a comment, rate, review where you can. And uh, any, any suggestions for shows, let us know. Sweet. Peace out.